Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to talk you through data roles that you want to avoid in your career and your job search. These are based on experiences that I've gone through over the last eight years as a data analyst working in London. And I want to take you through some of the mistakes I made taking certain jobs and working in certain data roles from my career, which I regret today, but I want to share with you some of those learnings to help you avoid those specific types of roles. So the first type of role that you wanna avoid is Excel heavy roles. Now, what does that mean? It basically means you wanna avoid any data roles where all you're doing is working entirely in Excel. Why is that a problem? Well, number one, you wanna be able to show throughout your career that you're gaining valuable skills. And if all you're ever working on is Excel, then you'll find yourself very limited in terms of your skills and your experience. Now, one example I have was when I was working for a university in the UK, I was employed by the marketing team to help them migrate from one website to another website. And as part of that migration, I was required to migrate across a huge list of courses entirely held in Excel. Now this list was over 50,000 rows long and more importantly, the list was very unclean and was very messy. And the entire project guys, I kid you not, took me at least four months to deliver because there were so many data issues, but more importantly, throughout the entire project, I actually gained zero skills. And it's one of those roles which I regret, especially in my career, and one of those examples that I wanna give you guys, if you're working in a role which entirely is dependent on Excel, try your best to avoid it. Now, one thing you can do is to ask for some additional tools. So if you get the chance, do ask your employer if you can use additional tools whether it's Python or SQL or Power Query or even perhaps a data visualization tool. Anything that helps you get the job done will be far much better on your CV than working purely in Excel. And that brings me on to the second type of example which you want to avoid in your career and that is to avoid niche roles and niche tools. So I'll give you an example. One of my very first data roles was as a web analyst. Now a web analyst is someone who analyzes traffic, essentially user journeys to websites. Now initially when I first started off as a web analyst, I loved it. I loved everything about web analytics. I was really buzzing, I was excited because I was very pro Google at the time. Google Analytics was the most widely used web analyst tool in the market. But that's where the journey kind of stopped because when it comes to web analytics, there's not much more you can learn other than Google Analytics and Adobe Analytics and maybe some tagging tools and maybe some marketing platforms. There's not much else that you can learn as a web analyst. In fact, your entire career and your entire experience is based entirely on websites and to some extent mobile apps. Now, as you can imagine, more and more people now are using mobile apps. They've moved away from using websites. And more specifically, the world of data science and machine learning has evolved. And it's not just web analytics, it's much more than web analytics. So if you want to dive into machine learning, you want to dive into artificial intelligence or data engineering, ideally guys avoid putting yourself in too much of a niche career. Another example of a tool which I consider niche today is Hadoop. Hadoop is a legacy big data platform form and today it's been replaced very quickly by cloud computing solutions by AWS, GCP and Microsoft Azure. If you land yourself or find yourself having to learn Hadoop, guys, my best advice is to not bother with those types of roles. You wanna learn skills which are in demand and the skills in demand today and tomorrow will be cloud computing. So avoid learning old tools like Hadoop. Number three guys is to avoid a data role where you're not given any flexibility or any capacity to learn. Now, what do I mean by that? You might find yourself in a fantastic role. You might enjoy the role. You might be in a very busy role working with a number of different people and on a variety of different projects. But if you have no capacity to learn, then reality is that you are only learning based on what you do in your job. And that can be a problem because if you wanna become say a data engineer or you wanna become a data scientist, 
you need to learn newer skills and your current role may not provide you with those. So if there's no capacity for you to learn and your employer doesn't give you the tools and the time to learn, then really you wanna avoid those types of roles. I'll give you an example. Many years ago, I worked in a sales role and the entire sales team was given access to lynda.com, which today is known as LinkedIn Learning. And it was fantastic. A lot of people took that subscription and they learn and they learn a huge amount from from having access to such a large portfolio of courses now as you can imagine a lot of those people took the learning and they left and went for better jobs the company as a result decided to pull the plug and removed everyone's access to linkedin learning and as a result a lot of people were upset with that and i myself decided that it was time to move on so one rule i have guys if you are in a data role or going into a data role your data role must offer you two things it must allow you the chance to earn and it must allow you the chance to learn if your role does not allow you to do either or then it's time for you to move on number four guys is to avoid roles where your managers or your peers take credit for your work now i've seen this happen a few times especially when you're developing deep dive analytics and your manager or your colleague presents all the findings to senior bosses and senior leadership or to clients, you are left out. You essentially are not given any credit and more importantly, your profile is not visible in front of those key stakeholders. So you wanna avoid working in roles where someone else is taking your work and passing it off as their own. I've seen it happen guys. I've seen it happen in a lot of companies. It's one of the biggest problems and one of the biggest issues facing a lot of data analysts you want to become a master and owner of your own work so avoid having to work in roles where someone else takes your credit number five guys is to avoid working in industries which are on the decline or about to decline so i'll give you two examples of industries that i've worked in which actually i realized was bad for my career and as a result i managed to switch out of those roles so the first example is of a company i worked which was a magazine company now this was a role i worked way back in 2015 2016 it was working for a local magazine company here in london and at the time guys the company was a fantastic company to work for but they had a fundamental problem and that was that magazine readership and newspaper readership was on the decline so as a result guys salaries were being cut roles were being cut future promotions were being cut so everything about that industry was crumbling and in fact a few years later that entire company that i used to work for the magazine company collapsed and i did one of the best things guys by leaving the role one year into the job i realized that it was an industry that was dying and i had to leave and more importantly i wasn't learning as well so i go back to that earlier rule you have to be learning and you have to be earning and if neither of those is true then you need to be finding a new job ironically I left the magazine company and then worked for another company which was in the healthcare space now you might think healthcare is a great industry to work in that isn't the case if you work for a company selling razor blades now why is that now in the last few years guys many people have stopped shaving as frequently as they used to in the 90s in fact everyone now including myself sports some degree of stubble or a beard and that's become the new fashion it's become the new look and as a result razor blade sales have been declining rapidly over the last few years so when i worked for this razor blade company wilkinson sword is the name of the company otherwise known as Schick in the US, I realized that my role was in danger and I realized that there was very limited prospects for promotions and very limited career prospects in general. So I realized that I had to leave the company and lo and behold, around about 2016, 2017, I finally left working for Schick Razors or Wilkinson Sword Razors as they're known here in the UK. And it was an amazing decision guys, because look at me now, I work in banking, I've doubled, tripled my salary since I've worked for that company. And some of my old colleagues who are still sat working at that firm have seen their careers really slow down. And I'll give you one more example guys, I was even offered the chance to interview at a news company that did newspapers in the UK. I even commented to the recruitment agency that I was a bit concerned that they were in a declining industry newspaper readership was in decline so again guys i used my intuition and my knowledge of different sectors and i positioned myself into the right sector for the data career that i have today so you want to avoid working in declining industries which are dying or about to die 
do your best to avoid those types of industries and data roles in those industries. You might find yourself working initially for one of those companies or in one of those industries, but within a year or two, you wanna jump yourself out of those careers into more high growth industries, whether it's tech, whether it's energy, whether it's e-commerce, find yourself something that is in growth and ideally stick to those industries. And last but not least guys, my number six tip that I have for you guys when it comes to avoiding particular data roles or data roles you want to avoid, avoid data roles where data quality is now, I don't often swear, but I have to swear on this one because there are so many roles out there, guys. So many. In fact, they say something like 80% of all data roles have a huge issue with data quality. Now, it's hard to avoid, but if you find yourself in a role or in a company where the data quality is so bad, it prevents you from doing your job and the management team are not taking notice or not taking any interest to improve data quality, you will have problems. And I'll tell you why, because if you're trying to build machine learning models, you're trying to analyze data, you're trying to visualize data, you're trying to move data, you will find that each and every time you try and do that, you have to prepare and you have to clean data first. In fact, you're going to be spending 80% of all your time cleaning data. You won't be analyzing it, you won't be telling fantastic stories, or uncovering fantastic machine learning algorithms, you will be faced with data issues and data cleaning problems all day, every day. So guys, avoid roles where data quality is a fundamental issue, but more importantly, management do not have any concern about data quality and the onus is back on you and you find yourself literally cleaning data every day and it becomes a role that you end up hating. And closely tied to that, guys, is data access. If you find yourself working in a company where you can't get data access, even though you're a data analyst and management and teams are refusing you data access, you can't do your job. Seriously, you cannot do your job if you cannot get data access. So it's in your interest to get data access and if data access becomes an issue, then move on. And if you find yourself in one of those roles, guys, it's not a problem, but you wanna be consciously aware and you want to be driving and making change to exit those kind of roles because it will, in the long term, hurt you and hurt your career and hurt your earnings and hurt your ability to learn. Do comment, do like, do subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I hope to see you guys on the next one. Bye for now.